Question of the day, what is your favorite flowchart game? And by that I mean you do this, then you do this, then you do this, or if this happens, then this happens, right? What is your favorite game that is directly uh, laid out in such a way where it's so easy to follow because you do A, then B, then C, or etc.? And by that I mean what is your favorite organized game, a game that might just both in the, uh, I don't think of it like this, think of it like the old House of the Dead shooters, right? You were on a rail, you had choices on that rail, but I mean, once you finished up in this area, you were going to go through the door and the big one's going to come out with a chainsaw and you shoot him, right? It's going to happen every time. So you're on a rail, but you still have choices. You can still do really great things and you can fail miserably. Question of the day, what is your favorite kind of rail shooter slash flow chart style of game? Now, why do I bring that up? Well, let's talk about a game called Beyond the Sun right now from... Uh, Rio Grande Games. This is a, uh, what am I going to say, 4X? It's, it's a worker placement, but you have a single worker, so it has a, a little bit of a maneuvering like scythe in the sense that you have to move your worker to a different action. You're going to be trying to unlock technology using a technology tree action. That's kind of the main area of focus. And you're also going to be sending planets to explore all the far reaches of space. So let's take a look right now at Beyond the Sun, Rio Grande Games. All right, so this is the Beyond the Sun setup for two players here. Uh, what's essentially going to happen is, first of all, you're going to start with these four uh, goal cards, these achievement cards. You're going to start with the two with the orange borders to be Empire and Transcendence, and then you're going to pick two other random ones from the A, A deck and the B deck. Uh, so you'll have four in the game. The game end is triggered when four discs are on here in a three to four player game, and, or excuse me, in a four player game, and three discs are on here in a two to three player game. Uh, there are things like research your first level four technology, uh, have all level twos researched, uh, colonize four space systems, which we'll talk about over here in a minute, and then have four or more power on three different locations also we'll talk about. The main game is played on this very kind of flow chart tech tree sort of thing. Your main action start over here, you will have an action selector just like this, and anywhere you see one of these hexagon shapes is an action space, so you can put an action there. Now you can never go to the same action twice, but you can move it to an open one at the same space if it's available. You're going to be researching these technologies, and the way to do that is to put your cubes of your populations out there onto them, and once you have a cube there, you now have access to that space. You'll take any immediate bonus, like this shows, immediately gain an ore and then upgrade a ship by level of one. We'll talk about what that does in a minute. And then you can now use this space on your turn. So on your turn, you can move here. So what you're gonna do on your turn is you're gonna take an action, any one of the actions you have access to, including ones out here, and you're then gonna produce, which is the next phase, the production phase, which down here on your player board, you'll notice that you've got your own personal player board. You gotta love that, right? With inset player things. Um, you're gonna produce anything that is open of these three options. So you have the population growth, which essentially takes these cubes and puts them out here to use this population, which you have to have in order to research more technologies, which is the main purpose of the game. You can also <clears throat> increase your ore production, which gives you or tokens, which are basically the only currency in the game that you have to spend besides these fellas here. So you're going to spend ore to uh, colonize, you're going to spend ore to research level two and up uh, places until better actions become available. When you research the production phase, you're going to re you're gonna, I'm sorry, when you produce of the population growth, you're going to take one available that you have showing from each column that's listed. So the first one you have is A. This is column A. You can take the first one available from A and turn it into a population. Now, had you had these open, you could also up. You could also put a population from here over to here as well. But you are not doing that in this first part. You're actually just doing those. So the way you're going to move these is anytime you see automation, it'll say the word automate right here you'll take one of these discs from this track, whichever one it tells you, and put it up here at the top. Now these will be worth points at the end of the game, but it also makes these actions better. So the more you uncover, the more you tend to uh, open up. The third thing you can do on your turn before the production, or sorry, the third production phase thing you can do is the resource trade, and that would be trading these variables as many times as you want, essentially. That's your player board. Now, 
The main goal of the game is to research these technologies out here so that you can become supreme outside exploring as you go beyond the sun. Now, some of these are covered up by uh, action event cards. These event cards are going to essentially, when you take the action to, uh, let's see, I'll show you on here. Research level of two costs you two coal or two ore, and then you put a person out there. Now, here's the other interesting thing. In order to do an area to research a technology that's out here you have to draw the lines to it so for instance this one you would have to have this one unlocked to unlock this technology this one says both so not only would you have to have this one unlocked but you also have to have this one as they draw the lines into it these two will draw off into here or this one will go all the way to three so it becomes like a technology tree and you follow those along when you decide okay i have the prerequisites of this one to unlock this one I will then flip this up, read the event. This will be something like March of Progress. Choose a level one starting tech, start, choose a level one technology, starting with you. Each faction who hasn't researched it may now research it. So, and there's some more stuff at the bottom there, but then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the level two technologies and you're gonna follow the color. So this is a green going into it. You're gonna deal face up until you see two green colors. So this is half green. There's the second one right there. You're gonna choose which of these you're gonna use and that will become the new action space or the new technology space out here. It may contain an action space. It may contain uh, just a one-time bonus. But both of these contain action spaces. Automate. So you'll take the immediate bonus here. And then you can now have these action spaces available. So we're going to pick this one. We automate one of these. And then it says jump. First of all, you take the rejected ones, shuffle them up, put them on the bottom of the deck. That way you're always going to see the newer stuff. The third sideboard or the third area of the board is this kind of exploration board. And the two player game is set up like this. You have a A colony and two B colonies. The way this works is those dice or those action cubes you have as ships can, when it says jump, you'll move along these routes one space per jump. And that can be split up. If you have the most power, which is the number on the cube, there you colonize it, which means you take one of the symbols showing. So in this case, it's the ore production and you have a colony there. Now you don't, I'm sorry, you control it, but you do not colonize it. When you colonize it, you would actually have to have enough power to get to that number there in the bottom left, the Mega Man looking boot right here. And then you're going to do the colonize action, which is only out here on terraforming and others right there at the bottom. Pay three coal, kill one of your people, essentially, and get rid of it by putting it back over here and then you would own this. So then this comes into your play area to where at the end of the game, you're gonna get extra points for it. But also, if you've chosen to do the uh, ore technology, you're gonna put another one of those on it, doubling that value. So that is the majority of how the game plays. You're gonna keep unlocking technology. They're going to keep getting better and better. You're gonna keep colonizing until someone has put the third in a two player game scoring disc out there on these achievement tiles. When that happens, the game will finish that round, and then you will play all one more round each. Count up points at the end of the game. There are a lot of different ways to get points, including uh, a point for each level one tech, point for two for each two, three for each three. The fours will typically give you points based on how they are. If a private technology tells you, you'll get two or three points. Your automation track, you'll score the points listed below on this top track here. From colonized systems, that would be the point value of those planets I showed you. Uh, for each controlled location, the outpost discs, that would be if you control any areas, you gain a but you control, but you don't colonize, you gain a point. For the most power, which basically if you have the majority in the planet Earth, essentially is what soul is, in deep space, you get a point for that. And then any event cards that give you a point, you would get points from those. And then from the achievements themselves, person with the most points wins the game. So that's Beyond the Sun. First of all, uh, love the theme. Love the idea, right, that you're colonizing Beyond the Sun. I love that this is a space game that's not all about fighting. It's not all about let's shoot each other up see who has the supremacy in the sky. Now there is that. You are abstracting that out on that side map by being area control and majorities for those planets, right? You're going to go out there and try to get the planets with the most power on them so that you can colonize them to take the points. But it's not a fight. It's more of who can hit the limit that you need and then who can quickly get to controlling it to where you can, um, oh, what is it called? Dominate? No. Colonize it. Who can do that, right? So all of that is great. So we, the the idea the idea is solid. The flow chart is solid. The idea of using this really 
Tech Tree as a main game is really smart to me. I think I don't know why that just hasn't really been done before, but the idea of doing a tech tree is the game. You follow the tree and it changes depending on uh, what you do. The first four are different every time you play. I mean, they're the same four, but they're in a different combination, right? So you know, that could be four times three times two times one. That's what, 24 different combinations that can be, plus the fact that there are all the different level twos, all the different level threes, and all the different level fours that can be out there in the game. So uh, above all, the action selection, the mechanics, everything just feels good. It works. When you pick an action and then you move to another action, they just make sense. The the um, iconography in this game just makes sense. Everything seems to work. Like Everything looks good about the iconography. You can see an action and go, oh, I know what that does. I know I take it from here and do this. I really love the fact that you're going to do an action, then you're going to flow into production, and then you're going to flow into checking for the end. That's what I meant by workflow earlier. It's very straightforward. It's boom, boom, boom. You're always going to do the same thing. You're going to do one action, you're going to produce, and then you're going to do check to see if you get an achievement. Having that structure really helps out when you're trying to alleviate analysis paralysis and things like that. The game plays pretty quick, actually, too, um, depending on your player count. Uh, when that fourth disc hits, everyone finishes the round, and then you will play one more round. So, I mean, the game will move pretty fast. You think you have all the time in the world, but you actually don't. Um, I really like the actual actions. They all feel pretty good. There's no action where I scoffed at and was like, well, that's useless. And in fact, I love finding the new technologies that feel like, well, these are going to be better for me anyway because I can get the instant bonus right now, and then I'll have access to that later technology, right? So uh, I really just like how this plays. This is a this is definitely a keeper game for me. Now, let's talk a couple areas that where it could be better. First of all, let's praise it on the production value and the, and the uh, presentation. I love the notched out holes on your player board. That is great. A two-layer player board to where things are notched out and they fit down into the board. Love that. Love that. Love it. I love the different colors for the different players. I love the the fact that those cubes are not dice, even though they're six-sided. You know, one, two, three. Yeah, there's, right? Dice are six-sided? They're not dice. They're six-sided cubes. And those cubes really only matter depending on what side is face up. You never roll them. They're either Resources that should be turned into citizens or resources that can be turned into ships or their ships levels 2, 3, and 4. I don't know why, but I just love that. Or levels 1, 2, 3, and 4. I love that fact that they are cubes with multi-uses. Instead of having tokens for this and tokens for that and tokens for that, you have one thing that does it all. And I really love the the idea of the, the player board itself. You know, you uncover these things with those tokens, those wooden uh, screen printed things, and you... <clears throat> whatever you have open, you then will choose that track to um, produce and you'll get whatever's there. And I really like that. So especially with the, uh, I like the mechanic of having the different columns. And again, the advanced game is totally different, but the different columns for, okay, I need to produce uh, population, but my A is empty, my B is empty. All I have is C and I can't produce that yet. So you have to figure out, okay, well then do I go down here and do the uh, trade action? So a lot of great push and pull. Now, where I am going to knock it, I do feel like the player boards look a little bit like an Excel sheet. And, and I'm, I'm, they literally do because they have gray, white, gray, white. And I appreciate that because it does help you kind of keep your eyes straight on the different columns. But those columns are not as important as, um, as the actual, I'm sorry, the rows are not as important as the columns. The columns themselves are what matter. So I did find that a little bit lacking that the player boards themselves could have used some maybe just unique art, right? Like, so you have this faction, let's get like uh, like Smartphone Inc. or something like that. You get four different images of what does that corporation's buildings look like? You know, what do these things look like? You just slap it in the background and put it behind there instead of just that white and black or white and gray background. But other than that, I really like the way it looks. I like the way the planetary board looks. I like how simplistic it is to follow. It's art design meets art, right? The idea that the artistic design really facilitates the actions a lot. I mean, just seeing that, the arrows, the tech tree, and all that sort of stuff, I'm just a big fan. Beyond the Sun, definitely going to stay in the collection. I I really, really, really like this game. Uh, Definitely go get this. Somebody literally asked... uh, in a Facebook thing earlier, hey, what's a space worker placement game that you can recommend that's not Aliens? And somebody, before I could even say it, was like, Beyond the Sun, they're like, that's the one to do. Go pick this game up. You will like it if you like Euros. It's not too long. It does reward engine building, and it it really just, it's fun. I mean, it's just a fun game. It's not too thinky. You just enjoy it. I mean, have fun with it. But it also gives you the depth of building that engine and seeing it pay off. So, that is Beyond the Sun. Big fan. Go check this game out. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. And Dice Tower Brian. Until then, we will see you.